All right, Fishaholic, so welcome back to another episode and, or welcome to the channel if you're a first time viewer. Right now I'm throwing on the Minn Kota uh, trolling motor because I was out of town for like three weeks, so I took it off and I'm hoping that we can get the boat rigged up and get out and do some fishing today. And the reason I was out of town is because I got married and shortly after went on my honeymoon with my beautiful wife Karina and we both had an amazing time. But now that I'm back home, it's time to get to work and if we're lucky, find some fish. But there is one more thing I need to do to get this boat ready for fishing today. And that is take out my older, heavier and larger uh, th uh, 12 volt, uh, 100 amp hour uh, batteries that I use to power my 36 volt trolling motor. And I have three of them in here, so I gotta take them out because recently uh, Power Queen, a uh, huge shout out to Power Queen by the way, uh, they sent me out three of these 12.8 100 amp hour uh, premium two mini lithium batteries. And I'm super excited about them because they are smaller in dimension. They're lighter in weight. I believe my older batteries in here are around 24 pounds. And these newer ones are around 19 point, like seven, seven pounds. And the batteries are fully charged and ready to go. All I have to do now is pop them in, hook them up in a uh, 36 volt system, and we're gonna be good to go. So because I have two cranking batteries in there and I needed three of these batteries to run my uh, 36 volt trolling motor, I could only fit two of these batteries in here and then I had the third one up in the uh, center console live well. All right, here's a side by side comparison uh, between the older batteries that I had on board and the newer Power Queen Premium 2 lithium batteries right there. And it's unbelievable how light they are. I can pick up all three of them at once. No problem here. Even do like a little workout. Oh. <laughs> Couldn't get that one up. Now a goal for me is to try and fit now two of these Power Queen batteries in the front live wheel here that I never use. And then I'm gonna try and just put the one extra third battery inside the console, just to make extra room in there and to have less wires running around. Let's first see if I can even fit both of them in here. Oh yeah, look at that. I can fit two in here. That's perfect. All right, the last one going in. All right, the dirty work is done and we're all plugged in. By the way, if you wanna check out Power Queen batteries, I'll put a link down in the description as well as a code so you could save on your order. Now let's see if the trolling motor turns on. Oh yeah, that little beep indicates that it's on. If it was dark out, we could see the green light on here, but I, I know by the beep that it's up and running, we're, so we're good to go. Now all we gotta do is load the boat with some fishing gear, go get some fuel and head to the ramp and I will see you guys out there.
right, we made it to our first spot here where I think we're gonna try jigging for some pompano. And maybe if we're extremely lucky, we could also find like a bonefish. And it's good to see the Minn Kota is working with the new batteries. And this uh, spot is basically like a big flat that we'll try drifting over and I guess just casting out this little shrimp lure on 12 pound fluoro uh, leader with a little split shot. Let's put a little proke here on this little lure so it has a little flavor. And also check this out. I brought my frying pan, cutting board, and my little portable uh, butane uh, stove top. So if we catch a keeper uh, pompano, I'll definitely cook them up for lunch. We've got the end of the incoming tide right now. So it could be pretty good on this flat because this uh, tide is bringing in hopefully a lot of pompano right onto this spot. Right now I'm trying to just uh, swing this little shrimp in the current along the bottom. So casting it to the right and letting it sweep in with the tide. And right now the wind is blowing against the tide so I don't even really have to use my trolling motor. We're just sitting pretty much in one spot here. But I will use it to you know, move up a little bit or move down a little bit. And we'll try this for like 45 minutes or so. And if we don't get anything, we're gonna change spots. The setup that I'm starting off with is the Salt Strong Fish Strong slot machine rod paired with the Daiwa 4000 Procyon. So a perfect light tackle setup for this kind of fishing. And Pompano is our main goal on this spot, but like I said, there is a chance, a slight chance, that we could get a small bonefish here. And I say that, that kind of with confidence because only a couple days ago, I was out here with my buddy JJ and we hit this spot for pompano, didn't catch a pompano, but he got a nice bonefish that was like 20 inches or so. And uh, it's January right now, late January. So that's kind of crazy. Or actually, you know what? Today might be February 1st, but I always thought that the bonefish that came into these waters were more here in like the summer, fall time of year, but it was cool to see that one. So they're here. We just have to get a little lucky. Oh, just had a good bite. That could have been a pompano or a bonefish. See, look at that. See how the tail got pushed up on the hook. So that was definitely a fish. Fish on. Oh, he's ripping, he's ripping. Could this be a pompano? Could it be a bonefish? <laughs> it's pulling pretty good. Wow, there he goes. This is just so fun with this light tackle. Oh, 
Oh, it's a little bonefish. A little bonefish. There he is. Woo! Got him. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. All right, let's give you guys a little closer look. I'm going to wet my hands. And... go there he is so cool this is actually my first ever Stuart bonefish and the first time that I tried to target these guys locally here I took my uh, wife Karina and she was the only one that caught the bones and I just watched her catch them and she also got a juvenile permit so pretty sweet to scratch the Stuart bonefish off my list of fish to catch. Let's get her back. All right, let's take a few more casts and see if I can get another. We've been here for about 45 minutes, so like kind of right around that time frame that I was gonna leave if we didn't get anything. But since we got that one bonefish, I'm gonna try for like another 20, 30 minutes or so and see if we can get another or maybe get a pompano. Oh, there's another fish. Could it be another bonefish? Nope. A baby mutton snapper. Look at that beautiful little fish. Oh, no. Sorry, buddy. That'll be the easy big one to catch in a few years. <laughs> All right, well, let's go make a move and uh, go try another spot that potentially could have some redfish there, snook, maybe some jack, snapper, and then our third spot will probably be another pompano spot. But I'm super stoked that we got that one and only bonefish, and I'm sure on a day that's a lot less windy, uh, and if we maybe had like some live shrimp, we could probably pick apart this spot and maybe catch a few bonefish. You know, especially being that we got one in like less than an hour on this spot here. So stay tuned. I'll see you at spot number two. try right along this channel edge here at the second spot got a little wet on the way here and to be honest it's actually kind of chilly out here today I'm gonna put my jacket on so I don't catch a cold we've got a really uh, good north wind so might as well block it a little bit oh check out that mark there's some good-sized fish here We'll start out uh, vertical jigging this Nomad Vibe. But before we drop it down, of course, I'm gonna put some Pro Cure on it so it has a little flavor. I switched from the head cam to the neck cam because of all the wind. I figured this would be a little bit better. So right now I've got my trolling motor going ahead at speed six and the current's still going in here at this spot, but this wind is blowing hard enough to kind of push me that way instead of going with the current. This spot might be a lot better once the tide turns and the current and the tide are kind of going the same direction. 
So we'll give this like 30, 40 minutes as well. And if I don't get anything significant, then we'll move. All right, nothing on the vibe here. I am marking some fish here though. And I think right now on this setup, I have a 40 or 50 pound leader on here. I'm gonna cut it off and try dropping down to a 30 pound. I'm attaching my 30 pound fluoro now to my 15 pound braid with a, a simple Albright knot. And I'm just going to go around like 20 to 25 times. And then at the end, where there's a little loop, we'll just go through there twice. So right through, and then I, I pull it back around and go through again. And there you go. A nice, strong, sleek braid to fluoro connection. All right, next, let's try casting out this little three inch swim bait on a 3 8 ounce jig head. And I actually made this jig head and glued the little eyes on it. And I think this should be a perfect little bite-sized snack for a snook or redfish here. And it's kind of like slack tide right now, so this is like the perfect time to try a small little uh, swim bait on a jig head before the, the outgoing current really starts to rip and then we'll have to try something probably heavier. cast this out and get it to see the bottom. We're in 15 feet of water right here, but out where I'm casting, uh, it was, it's probably around like 20, 22 feet. And then I'll just hop it on the bottom back to where I'm at right now. So by the way, the setup that I'm using with uh, the Vive and this little swim bait is the seven foot six dark matter fishaholic inshore series spinning rod and this is a medium fast action and i have it paired with this 4000 uh, for gate and i got 20 pound braid on here as well oh there's a good bite oh there's another bite oh something small though but it's hitting hard I'm marking a lot of fish here, so, but they look kind of small. So I kind of want to figure out what they are. They could be pompano, could be snapper. And I bet you they'll hit this little shrimp here. Unless it's all bait or something. There he is. Fish on. Oh, look at that. A gray grunt. You know what? I'm going to throw this guy in the live well just in case I can't get a pompano. Then we're going to cook this guy up for a snack. Time for spot number three, and hopefully we can get a pompano or two there. All right, I'm gonna try dropping down the little voodoo shrimp here. And we'll give it like 30 minutes. Maybe we can get a pompano here.
Oh, fish on. Oh, I lost them. Dang it. Let's check my shrimp. Oh, I got cut off. That must have been a bluefish or something with teeth. Let's try this color here. Oh, fish on. Not sure what this is. Oh, it's pulling hard. Ah, uh, catfish. Funky one. There he is. Oh, ho, ho. this might be a pompano. I hope it is because. If it is, we're probably gonna head right out of this spot and go find a calm area to go on spot lock and cook them up. Oh no, I think it's a bluefish. All right, not a pompano, a little cocktail bluefish. Pretty cool. I actually made fish cakes with a small cocktail blue the other day and they were delicious. But I'm gonna throw this guy back. All right, let's roll. It's already four o'clock. I don't wanna waste any more time. Uh, trying to catch pompano in that spot because uh, it doesn't seem like there's a whole lot there. Uh, there's three guys fishing other than myself and uh, I've only really seen them get uh, bluefish as well. So we're gonna go to a spot a little bit further up river where maybe we could get out of the wind. We'll put the trolley on spot lock and then we'll uh, bust out the cooking stuff and uh, we'll uh, cook up that gray grunt for lunch. Let's flay up our grunt real quick. So I've got this new Dano's seasoning, which I'm excited to try, and I think it should be delicious on that little grunt.
that's good. The Dano seasoning is on par with how I like to kind of blacken my fish. And it's good to have the sweetness from the pineapple also that I, you know, mixed in with the butter and also that uh, red onion taste. Oh, that is so good. If uh, you guys want to check out Dano seasoning down in the description, I'll put a link down there so you can click it and maybe pick some up for yourself. I definitely have to do this again. <laughs> like typically when I'm doing these catch and cooks out here on the water, you know, I'm just cooking up the fish and just eating the fish with my hands, you know, keeping it simple, not mixing it with other stuff or making a sandwich. But I think we'll do something like this uh, coming up in the next couple days. And maybe we'll make like a fish wrap or something out here on the water or uh, another sandwich because this really is the bomb. Mm. So good. All right, so I'm gonna finish up eating this sandwich and then I think we're gonna run a little bit further up river to a spot that kinda has been good for uh, a lot of the Jack Creval. Any good? What's up? Any good? What is, the, the sandwich? Oh, the snook. Oh, no, I haven't, I, I didn't try for snook today. I got a bonefish down there though. Really? Yeah, a little while ago. Cool. Yeah. Good luck. Comment down below if you guys would have eaten this with me out here. Although I would have probably had to catch another fish to serve more than one person. <laughs> and I, I was marking a lot of those grunts at that second spot, but I can only get the I could only get the one. I'm sure if I like had a live shrimp or something like that, I probably would have been able to knock their lights out. All right, that's it. I'm gonna clean up a little bit. And then we're gonna beeline it as fast as I can up river to a spot that has been pretty good for some Jack Creval. Uh, I might also stop off uh, at a bridge and see if we can get some snook or something. But uh, it's already almost five and the sun sets at around six. So we only have like an hour or so left of filmable daylight. So let's keep it going and hopefully get a few more fish in the boat today. All right, let's try around these docks for like uh, 10, 15 minutes and see if we can pull anything out of it. Let's try casting around this Yozuri top knock around the pilings. Oh, <laughs> there was a bite, first cast. It was a small one, but good enough. Oh, look at them all. Oh man, there's micros here right now. Oh my God, these crazy fish. Got him. Real small one. See ya. The sun basically just set. So we got like probably like 10, 20 minutes before we start losing the film with daylight. Hopefully we can get one more fish. All right, to start, let's try dropping back this little swim bait. There he is, good fish here. 
Oh yeah. Well, it felt good. And <laughs> now it's just kind of surfing in. What do we got here? It's got some decent weight. I think we got ourselves a snook. <clears throat> got him. <clears throat> Sweet. At least we found one snook today. Get a quick measure on this one. He's just about 27 inches. There he goes. All right, y'all. Well, I think that is gonna be about a wrap for this video. And it wasn't uh, a crazy outing, but it was uh, pretty interesting and, and cool in my book because we got the bonefish, we got a uh, delicious gray grunt <laughs> once we cooked it up, then it was delicious. And it, it's unfortunate we didn't get the pompanos, but hey, that's the way it goes sometimes. And it was nice to kind of uh, wind things down with uh, at least one uh, decent snook uh, this evening. So thank you guys all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please smash that like button. And uh, if you're looking for some new batteries for your uh, trolling motor, uh, def definitely check the link in the description for the Power Queen batteries and also the link for the Dano's uh, seasoning. And uh, I hope to see you all in the next episode and uh, make sure you smash that subscribe button below so you know when I post future uploads and hit that little bell notification button. Until the next episode, like always, live to fish, fish to live.